What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about Uncharted. So Uncharted is a brand new film coming out starring Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg and is the latest live action adaptation of a video game series by the exact same name. There's quite a few installments in this series and to be completely honest right off the top, I've only played the first one and part of the second one way back in the day. So I'm not approaching this film as like a long time Uncharted fan. The thing I remember actually the most about those games is the gameplay because that's what was the most exciting about it for me. Whereas the story was cool but I, you know it's been quite some time so I honestly don't remember it all in terms of all the details. So I'm not going into this with a super attachment to the characters of Nathan Drake and Victor Sullivan, but you know, I do, you know, have some connection to some degree where I was able to pick up on some of the Easter eggs and references and nods and a cameo that takes place in this film. I will be avoiding spoilers, but in case you don't know what this is all about, the Uncharted series pretty much is just a newer iteration of, you know, an Indiana Jones, Laura Croft, Tomb Raider kind of thing thing except with Nathan Drake at the middle of it. So this movie in a lot of ways is a combination of things like Indiana Jones, Laura Croft, or things like National Treasure. So we're on a search for gold and we have Nathan Drake, the character played by Tom Holland, and then we have uh, the character of Victor Sullivan played by Mark Wahlberg as they team up to come together and find this gold that's just been lost somewhere in history and yeah, yada yada yada, I'm sure you can get the basic premise. And if you've seen the trailer, you know what this movie is going for big fun over the top popcorn film that doesn't take itself too seriously and in a lot of ways I think this movie definitely delivers on that front going into it I didn't expect something that was gonna be overly well written or something that was gonna be super deep in its narrative I definitely just expected a good popcorn film and I can definitely say as somebody who was sitting there eating popcorn that I think it definitely fits that category this film is directed by Ruben Fleischer who's directed things like the Zombieland films as well as the first Venom and yeah very similar opinions that I have about the those films with this one is that you know there are elements that feel underdeveloped there are elements of humor that don't always land but overall it's just a nice easy breezy fun watch with some really fun action and I think that's really what keeps this movie afloat I think where this movie kind of suffered for me was in some of its logic at times the fact that they kind of held back on some of the violence kind of making this more of a much more closer to PG and PG 13 kind of iteration of Uncharted where there are moments that definitely could have utilized a little bit more violence but overall I I think the movie does do a good job of just kind of being a big fun silly movie even though I do think the story could have been expanded upon a little bit more. One of the biggest criticisms people had or fans had leaning into this movie is that Tom Holland is nothing like Nathan Drake and yeah if you played the games like I said I only played the first one and the like part of the second one then yeah without a doubt you know Nathan Drake is a much older character in those games and he's a little bit more of a seasoned experienced character whereas here we're seeing essentially his his origins and in a lot of ways Tom Holland is giving us a familiar performance to his Peter Parker performance it's different of course but you know it's very similar he's definitely giving a very similar feel and vibe so when I have seen people compare him to spider-man in this movie I can't say I'm entirely surprised Mark Wahlberg is playing the character of Victor Sullivan who in the games is a little bit more of a older grizzled character with a little bit of humor on him and Mark Wahlberg in this movie in a lot of ways is just doing the Mark Wahlberg thing so so I don't know that this is necessarily going to thrill fans in terms of its accuracy, in terms of being an adaptation, but as just a new different iteration to these characters in the story, I found it to be a good fun time. It breezed by, though I will say there were moments where the pacing slowed down quite a bit. There was a bit of fat on this film that I probably would have trimmed off, but overall, you know, by the time the movie was over, I could say that was a good popcorn flick. Nothing crazy, nothing that's going to blow your socks off, but definitely something to kind of just sit back and watch in the movie theater or even watch on streaming once it comes out. I think this is a movie that a lot of people will probably end up enjoying even though it's not the strongest in terms of its narrative. There are things that are breezed over. There are things at time that make you go, uh, does that really make sense? There are a couple moments of logic and a couple of moments of dialogue that don't work. But I do find that the performances for the most part were fun, light, and in a good time. I really enjoyed the chemistry between Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg. I thought that they had a lot of fun with this movie and that much was very clear. And there's a really great display of stunt work throughout the entirety of the film. Of course, there are big over-the-top spectacle moments 
moments that definitely rely on CGI, but there are some great moments where you can definitely tell there's a good blend of CG and practical effects. And if you've seen any of the behind the scenes stuff that they've released before this, Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg have talked about how some of the stunts on this film were pretty dangerous and a lot of fun to do. And you can actually see a lot of those scenes that they actually filmed with the green screen still, where you can see that they're utilizing a lot of digital effects while also using a lot of practical effects or real stunt work, which is definitely present in this film. Overall, without spoilers, I found this to be a good time, like I said, though I do think this is the movie that you gotta kinda go in with tame expectations. This isn't a movie, again, that's gonna blow your socks off. This isn't a movie that's gonna have you completely shocked with twists and turns. This is, in a lot of ways, a run-of-the-mill action film that just so happens to have really great action, big spectacle moments, but in terms of its side characters and its villains and its story, it is something you have seen before. There are predictable elements, but that didn't remove the enjoyment that I did still have with the film. I would say actually my biggest gripe with the film is without a doubt it's villains. You have Antonio Banderas in here as the villain and his villain feels very similar in this film as to the villain that he played in I believe last year's or the years before that, I can't even remember, of uh, the Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Whenever that movie came out, he played a very generic villain in that film, somebody with a thick Spanish accent who's going after something that's important to him and his culture and what he wants and the power that he has as an individual. And he's kind of doing the same thing here. Somebody who's like the leader of a corporation with that thick Spanish accent that is going after some sort of prized thing. It just feels very generic for Antonio Banderas at this point. It's something that kind of just feels like a almost cookie cutter role. And uh, I thought they were going to do more with his role in this film, but eventually it just kind of amounts to another generic villain role and I think that's definitely the element that took me out of it the most but as far as Tom Holland as far as Mark Wahlberg the faces of this movie the action and the, the funny stuff and the, the spectacle I thought that they nailed that part and it leaves it wide open for a sequel definitely setting up for a sequel and I think I would definitely get tickets to see a sequel just because I really enjoyed the main leads of this film and the chemistry that they had throughout so even though this film does have some hollow elements and some plot holes at times and some characters that don't 100% work i do think it's a good time and i do recommend checking it out if you want to so a big thanks to you guys for watching hit that like button comment your thoughts subscribe for more videos and i'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye